Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Study the word in that area and that will give you the grace that you need to overcome that problem. Don't just feel guilty if you got a bad temper. Study what the Bible says about anger. There's power in the word to set you free, not power in guilt. Well, who is God? That's the name of the series this weekend. And you might think, well, what a unique title that is. Well, I thought it might be kind of catchy. And actually, we're even throwing around the idea of writing a book with that title on it because I think a lot of people either know a little bit about God, but they need to know him a lot deeper. They need to know a lot more about him and know him in a more intimate and a more personal way. I tell people all the time, Jesus did not die so we could all have a religion. He died so we could have a deep, intimate, personal relationship with God through Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, in the temple, the physical temple that existed then, there was a very thick curtain that was three feet thick that separated the presence of God from the people. And only the high priest could go in there, and then only once a year. And he went in to make sacrifices for the sins of the people. There was an outer court, an inner court, but then this holy place into the presence of God, the people were separated by a curtain three feet thick. When Jesus died, that curtain tore, quote, by itself with no human instrumentality, not from the bottom up, from the top down, because it was so high that no man could have reached it, and God did it just that way to show that when Jesus died, the way was opened up into the intimate presence of God. Now, every person can go in and come out, go in and come out, and that's why Jesus died. So our sins could be forgiven, so we could have eternal life, but so we could have an intimate relationship with God while we're here. Let me tell you that God has a lot more for you than just a weekly trip to church. He wants you to learn how to do life with him. So who is God? I believe that anybody who really knows God, if anybody really knew God, they would definitely want him in their life. How could you possibly reject God or say you didn't believe in God if you really understood his character and the kind of relationship that he wants to have with you and the beautiful, amazing, wonderful things that he's done for you? And so the redemptive names of God that are seen in the Old Testament that all culminate and come together in the name Jesus in the New Testament tell us a lot about what God does. And you know, anytime that you say to somebody, who is so-and-so, if I said, who is Israel Houghton, you would say, oh, he's that great worship leader. Matter of fact, he led worship at the Joyce Meyer Conference last week. So we connect who people are to what they do and certainly we're a lot more than what we do we're children of God but that's one of the ways that we know people by what they do so we've been looking this weekend so far at what God does and I can't go back and cover all the ground I've covered already but tonight we have three that we want to do and there's four more for tomorrow so pray for me but Jehovah which means God dash Shalom means the Lord is peace. So anytime that you feel real peace in your life, it's God. The devil never brings peace. The world doesn't bring peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And I think one of the things that people want more than anything, matter of fact, I believe the three things that people want are the things that the kingdom offers us. Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, it's not things, but it is righteousness, feeling right about yourself, not having to go around feeling like something's wrong with you all the time, and we can only have that through Christ. He is our righteousness, so the only way that we can have, feel right about ourselves is to know him. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I mean, how awesome would life be if we just didn't have to feel bad about ourselves anymore, ever, for any reason. We just knew that we were loved, and we had peace, and we had joy. So he's the one that gives us peace. You don't even have to 
Pray that God would give you peace. He's already given you peace. You need to know that he is your peace. How many of you enjoy the atmosphere in here? Okay, you know, even right now, what we feel in here is the presence of God. How many of you would say it doesn't feel like this where you work? <laughs> and so we need to realize that, you know, this, wow, this wonderful peace. And boy, it even increases when we begin to worship, doesn't it? That's God in our lives. And so I would suggest that you hang out with the Prince of Peace so you're not frustrated and upset all the time. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. I love that, that the more we let him govern our lives, the more peace we're gonna have. His government and his peace go together. Now, we can be believers and still be trying to run our own lives and we still won't have much peace. But as soon as you say, God, your will be done, your peace is gonna begin to increase. We always think about what God's taken away from us and really the only things he ever wants us to part with are things that are hurting us anyway. Ephesians 2.14 says, he is himself our peace. For he is himself our peace, the bond of unity and harmony. He has made us both Jew and Gentile, one body, and has broken down, destroyed, and abolished the hostile dividing wall between us. Now, this was very pertinent in Paul's day because nobody hated each other any more than Jews and Gentiles. They absolutely despised each other. Well, has anybody noticed that there's always, somewhere in the world, there's always hatred between races? And it's amazing to me that, there, that we think we have to hate people just because they're not like us or even just because they don't think the same way that we think. You don't have to necessarily agree with somebody in order to live in harmony. Dave and I are very different, and I can tell you that there's a lot of things that we don't think the same way about or feel the same way about, but I can also tell you that we literally almost never have an argument or have a fight now. You know why? Because we have learned how to disagree agreeably and respectfully. And boy, do we ever need unity among all the church denominations. It's time for us to stop fighting about the few things we don't agree about and begin to fellowship around the name of Christ and the blood of Jesus. And that's one of the things that I love about the kind of conferences we do, I can pretty much guarantee you that we've got people here from every religion that exists and some who haven't even made your mind up yet. And uh, I love it. You know why? Because the Word of God is for everybody. And the Word of God works the same in everybody's life. And so I really like this scripture because it says, in Christ we all become one. And why is that? Because everything that I am, I owe to Christ. And everything that I'm not, I have to trust him to take care of. And so when I understand that he is my bond of unity, then I no longer need to compare myself with anybody else. I don't need to look down on them if they're not like me, and I don't have to look down on me if I'm not like them. It's wonderful to have peace, amen? I no longer have to be jealous of other people when I know that my only worth and value is in Christ. Jesus gives us a different kind of peace. I'm not gonna have you turn to the scripture, it's quite long in the Amplified, but in John 14, 27, it says, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you, but my own special peace I now give and bequeath unto you. And then the Amplification says, so stop allowing yourselves to be upset and disturbed. <laughs> I like that part. 
Jesus said, look, I'm giving you peace. Now you need to hold on to that peace and stop getting all upset about everything that's going on because if you really know who I am, you know that you don't have to worry about all the junk you're worrying about because I'm taking care of stuff. How valuable is it to have a relationship with God? It's amazing. But then one of my most favorite scriptures and one of the scriptures that has probably helped me more than any other to really begin to access the peace that Jesus died to give me is found in 1 Peter 3.11, and I'm gonna quote you the last half of it because it simply says that we are to pursue peace. If you look down about halfway, it says, well, we'll just read it. Let him turn away from wickedness and shun it. Let him do right. Let him search for peace, harmony, undisturbedness from fears, agitating passions and moral conflicts, and seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire peaceful relations with God, with your fellow man, and with yourself, but pursue and go after them. So here we see three different relationships where we need to pursue peace. I need to have peace with myself. You need to have peace with yourself. Until I have peace with me, till I'm getting along with me, I'm never gonna get along with you. It was impossible for me to be mad at me all the time and never get along with Dave. And so the question always needs to be asked, how do you feel about yourself? What kind of relationship do you have with you? To be honest, you have, you spend more time with you than you do anybody. <laughs> Did you ever think about that? Hey, like, wow, I'm with me all the time. <laughs> I never get away from me. And so really the way you feel about yourself is much more important than the way anybody else feels about you. And the way you think about yourself is more important than the way anybody else thinks about you. And the way you talk about yourself is more important than the way anybody else talks about you. Now, I'm very serious in what I'm saying here tonight. I've got a lot of ground to cover, and I don't plan to stick a long time with this subject of peace. I'm just going to go through some things and read you some things, and each one of them would deserve a whole night of teaching in themselves. But boy, if there's one that catches your attention, you need to hold on to it and do some more study yourself or look for some more material along these lines that we have available. One of the ways that you can have peace with yourself, well, not one, there's about, how many here? Eight I'm gonna talk about. Don't continually inventory your faults all the time. If you wanna have peace with yourself, just don't sit around all the time and think about what's wrong with you. God will deal with you about each thing as he chooses and the Holy Spirit will convict you about things that he wants to convict you about. Stop comparing yourself with other people and competing with them all the time. You don't have to pray like somebody else. You don't have to memorize scripture because somebody else memorizes scripture. I was with another well-known Bible teacher the other day and she just made a comment in talking. She wasn't trying to brag or anything. She said the other morning when I was doing some memorization work in, and she named a book of the Bible. And I can remember days when that would have made me feel threatened because I don't sit around and try to memorize large portions of scripture. It's just not my thing. I know a ton of scripture, but I just know it from all the years that I've taught the word. And I can quote a lot of scripture, but if you said to me right now, can you quote the whole book of Philippians? I'd have to say no. But I know Bible teachers that can do that. And I think that that's wonderful. But you see, we're never free as long as we have to compete with somebody else and we feel like that we need to do what they do. Can anybody give a big shout for being who you are? Amen. And isn't it wonderful to be able to be happy for what somebody else can do without letting it threaten you or feel like that now you gotta have this wall of division between you and them because they kind of threaten you even when you're in their presence. <laughs> Amen? Number three, listen to what God's word says about you, not what other people say about you. You know, we get letters at the office that are not so kind sometimes. And uh, I can just tell you that I don't read them. So therefore, you just might as well not write them. Because <laughs> I don't read them. You know why? The devil tries to give me enough trouble, I don't need anybody helping him by telling me everything they think is wrong with me all the time. 
Now, you know, somebody on our staff reads them, and if, it, if we get enough of the same thing, they might come and mention it to me because I don't want to never take correction from anybody. But one thing's for sure, if you listen to everything that everybody has to say about you, especially if you're around a lot of people, there's nobody that can please all the people all the time. I don't care what you do, you just can't do it. If you want to have peace with yourself, let go of the past and press toward the future. If you want to have peace with yourself when you make a mistake, repent, receive your forgiveness, and go on. Don't spend a month in condemnation before you decide to come back to terms of peace. Guilt is useless. All it does is weaken you and make you fall into more sin. I said guilt is useless. All it does is weaken you, and it actually makes you fall into more sin. One more time. Guilt is useless. It actually weakens you and makes you fall into more sin. If you want to do the same thing over and over, just every time you do it, feel guilty about it for a month, and you can be guaranteed that you'll probably do it again. But if you repent, ask God to forgive you, and then ask Him to strengthen you, and do what His Word says, let go and go on, study in that area. Don't just feel guilty about it. Study the Word in that area, and that will give you the grace that you need to overcome that problem. Don't just feel guilty if you got a bad temper. Study what the Bible says about anger. There's power in the Word to set you free, not power in guilt. Decide, number six, is decide, make a decision to like yourself. Huh? What was that again? See, to be honest, probably some of you have never even given two seconds worth of thought to how you feel about yourself. You have a relationship with you, and you need to have a good relationship with you. Now, I hope this doesn't sound haughty and prideful because I don't mean it to, but I like myself. I kind of enjoy myself. You know, I think I'm kind of funny sometimes. And a little bit ditzy sometimes. And, you know, I do some kind of interesting things. The other day we were on the... <laughs> we got here, we were sitting on the, the plane. Our number got drawn for the customs agent to come on board, which always takes longer. And uh, so he came on board. And, you know, they always, I think, they try to look mean on purpose. I don't know, but it's like... <laughs> what are you in Canada for? How long are you going to be here? You bringing anything in? You taking anything out? You know, and then he says to me, um, he says, what are you doing here? I said, I'm doing a conference here. And, he's, and he said, what's the name of your company? But I thought he said, what's your name? And so I said, oh, we're Dave and Joyce Meyer. He said, no, the name of your company. My mind just froze up, and I'm going, um, uh, uh. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of the name of my own ministry. And finally I said, uh, uh, oh, Joyce Meyer Ministries. And even he laughed at that. <laughs> so last conference I went to, first time I've ever done this in my whole life in 37 years of teaching, I forgot my Bible. So I forgot my Bible, that conference, this conference, I forgot who I worked for. <laughs> really interesting. And you know what? I could think, oh, how, how dumb, how stupid you look. I just think it's funny. <laughs> you know, when you can learn to laugh at yourself, you can really have a good time. <laughs> Stop being angry about every little thing that you do wrong. Make decisions and be confident. Don't always second guess yourself and go to other people to ask them what you should do. Hello? <laughs> and make an agreement with God tonight to never again speak negative things about yourself out of your own mouth. How can you have peace with God? I got a whole bunch of those too. Give up trying to control your life and realize that your times are in His hands. You know, being upset because God's not hurrying will not make Him hurry. I mean, however long it takes, that's how long it's going to take. Don't be mad at God because he's not giving you everything that you want. He's got a better plan than you do. 
Man's mind plans his way, but God directs his steps. God finally taught me when you ask me for something and you don't get it, it's not because I'm holding out on you, it's because I've got something better in mind and you don't know enough yet to ask me for that. You might be single and saying, I want to marry that guy. And God may be saying, no, you really don't. <laughs> you may think you do, but trust me, you really don't. If you want to have peace with God, stop trying to figure out what he's doing in your life. God is many times a mystery. And we don't always know what he's doing. We live life forward, but we understand it backward. When you're walking through your life, you're like, what is going on? And then, I mean, I could, things that just worried me and had me upset and frustrated me. So many of the early years of our ministry, I didn't get it at all. But now I can look back over here and I can point to every one of those things and say, this is why God let that go on that long. This is why God had me in this place. This is why God didn't deliver me from that when I wanted to be. They all help make you who you are. And they help you become what God wants you to become. Stop trying to figure out what God's doing in your life. You say, well, oh, this is a lot easier than you make it sound. <laughs> well, I didn't say it was easy. I'm just telling you this is what you got to do to get to where you can have peace. 2 Thessalonians 3.16, I want to put this scripture up. I think this is so amazing. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself grant you his peace the peace of his kingdom at all times and in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes, the Lord be with you all. Don't you love that scripture? That's awesome. And then, lastly, how can you have more peace with people? Hmm. Does anybody need a little more of that? Well, you can only have peace with people when you're willing to accept them the way they are and know that only God can change them. Hmm. Some of you made bad faces at me before you clapped. Well, I just can't put up with them the way they are anymore. Well, God put up with you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Listen, here's the deal. If you're in relationship with somebody that is difficult for you, but you feel like that you're supposed to be in the relationship with them, then understand that God is not going to ask you to be somewhere and not give you the ability to be there and be happy. Something's wrong with this part of the room. Only these people over here are clapping. I mean, it all came from right over here, this one little pile. All right, I'll go over here and try it. You got to realize that if you're in relationship with somebody that's difficult for you to handle, and they've got a bunch of stuff that you'd like to see changed, if you're in there because you feel like that's where God wants you to be, then you have to understand that God is never going to ask you to be somewhere and not give you the grace and the ability to be there and enjoy your life. You know, the Bible uses many different names in reference to God. Elohim. El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, many different things. And a lot of times we don't realize how important it is to study those because each one of those references to God talks to us and teaches us about another area of his redemption in our lives. And so when you study that, you will learn his promises and more about who he is. He's our peace, our provider, our righteousness. He'll fight our battles for us. There is incredible power for your life in knowing the names of God.
Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joins-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse inspiratie? Inspirerende gedachten levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan. 